Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jerry Yasser and I'm a Microsoft MVP for Office Apps and Services. First thing I want to acknowledge that I've been MVP for a few years and this is my first demo at PNP uh, and something that's not part of my main job. So, um, you know, it's, it's something that I want to admit before anybody actually catch something in my code. So um, I am an, an Office 365 architect. I don't do development as full time or something like that. It's all learning that I did through a PNP stuff and and some other, uh, you know, all the training that's available on the PNP uh, uh, GitHub sites. So um, I took a look at some of the samples and I decided to build something that I was working on. So this is the uh, PNP work clock uh, web part uh, that I, uh, the idea came from the PN, the the office, the SharePoint online uh, world time web part. But the idea was to actually develop it, make it reusable so that we don't have to add it to every page uh, and start writing the location of the company. So giving you the some of the, uh, the so in this next 15 minutes or so, we'll be looking at the overview of the web part uh, and then looking at the demo and the code. So it will be quick. I would not be taking a lot of time. Um, so the behind the scenes uh, for storage of the, the clocks, the we use a SharePoint list. And the SharePoint list is very basic list with the, with the title of the location and the GMT value, which is in the positive or, or negative GMT or UTC time. Uh, you can enter that time. Uh, additionally, you can also your your web part uh, or your clocks using setting the order of the value, very traditional. Uh, the uh, Once you do that, you can also set those clocks to active or inactive. So when you uh, display those web parts on the page, only the active one will appear on the page. Uh, additionally, the, the web part is responsive. So if you put it in a smaller zone or a smaller um, section, it will automatically resize itself to the appropriate size. For the, for the formula for the day, time calculation is done using a custom formula. We are not using, or I'm not using any uh, of the uh, DST time zone calculation fee uh, values at this moment. It was my first, though there were some examples that you can use to, to check if the current time zone has a DST, and then it will apply the updates automatically. Uh, this version does not have that. For reading SharePoint um, data, we are using PNPS. It was simple at that time, uh, first learning, so uh, I thought that's the best option to have. The, the two types of clocks that the web part uses are the analog clock uh, or uh, and a live clock. Both are available on GitHub. They are free to use. So I, I picked them uh, instead of creating everything from scratch. And I, I think I will not be able to create them anyway. Uh, so uh, let's quickly jump into the demo. Switch to my SharePoint site. So you can see that I have the uh, web parts added to the home page. Um, I was playing with it. so. Let me edit the screen and you can see that I have uh, the web part is right here. You can edit the properties of the web part. You can enter a look, uh, the title of the web part. Then you have to select the list. So I'm using the list selection uh, you know, property pane uh, from uh, SPFX. So to select the list and you can set up three different type of properties. You can allow the web part to have time. So right now you can see that the time is set to off and if you Turn on the time. It will actually show you the time in the digital format, which is the live clock time. And you can also show active or inactive clocks. So if I turn it off right now, I have only um, all of them active, maybe one of them not. So um, show title is also a section. I can actually turn it off if I like um, to actually not show any title. So that's the simple web part. Um, more if you uh, if I go and customize the uh, section, you can see that it will automatically expand and, um, and take the full space. If I publish the page, you can see that the, the web part will move on, on the full space. Additionally, if you see that the web part also has, um, each clock has a different, uh, you can say, theme. Uh, the theme is predefined in the web part code. So that based on the time of the, the, of the day, the web part will show a different color. You can see that the white is uh, New York, so it's a morning time, so it will show a small tooltip that it's having a red day. Uh, if it's in the evening, so you'll see that uh, the, the gray or light gray color will be used, and it's in the night, it will use a light, uh, a dark uh, black color. So this is the, the, the basic web part theme. Uh, the web part uh, analog clock will automatically update. 
Uh, the uh, at this moment, I'm, I'm not showing ticks on it so that the, you know, it's basically very annoying when all the ticks are moving at the same time. So seconds um, is not visible on the screen. That's why I have hidden it. But if you want to take a look at the, the, the list behind the scene, you can see that this is the list. You can see we have all the locations defined and we can set those active or inactive or set the order and the GMT values are right here. So before we move on to the next one, let's quickly take a look at the code. So I must admit this will be a very basic code for many of you have been developing uh, React based applications. It was my first, so um, excuse me for anything um, that you feel funny in it. Uh, so the, the web part uses a few properties. Uh, you can see that some, some properties like selected list that are visible on the screen. Uh, load location is the, the method that is used to get values from the uh, from the list uh, using uh, PNPJS. Um, the web part is very simple QD using um, get a list items command. Uh, you can also have the show active only or, or show title properties. Uh, in the, to display those properties, I'm using the uh, property field list picker. Uh, simple, uh, it's straightforward. Um, just configure some of the basic values or maybe um, in, in, in reality, I went to the samples and look at some of the samples and I was able to understand how easy it, it, easy it was to actually implement that. Um, for the show time, I'm using the, the property pane toggle. Simple, again, this is not a training. So um, very basic stuff that's in the web part. But in the implementation, um, I the implementation is done basically and in, in the most of the stuff is in the component did mount. Uh, the clocks are actually a clocks collection. Sorry, uh, the, uh, so when I get all the items from the uh, locations, um, I loop on each and every one of them, and I mentioned that this is using a custom formula to, to calculate the date time. So this is where this happens. This is where we are getting the, the time. It's actually a custom formula available on the internet. So you based on those values of the GMT, you calculate the, the date the time value. And I'm using moment.js to actually making sure that I have the correct time. And once I have the time, I calculate the, the basic time of the day value um, and add that string logic. Uh, this could have been done a little bit better, but I, I felt just for fun, it will look nicer to have this kind of a message. So it checks if the time is, you know, from 4 to like 6 p.m. It's a day and then if it's, uh, you know, a little bit later, it's evening and then a later rest is night. Um, once it's done, basically I'm pushing all those the string um, values uh, that I'm collecting, uh, including the clock. So you can see that I have an analog clock, and analog clock is basically that the whole clock visible on the screen. And if the user uh, choose to show time, then I'm using the simple clock, which is actually uh, the React live clock that you can use. I'll show you uh, the demo of those clocks pretty, pretty uh, very quickly. So once uh, you, you, the loop is finished, in the end, I'm adding those clocks uh, in the clocks collection. And you can see I'm adding them to the state. And then uh, below in the, in the render component or uh, run method, I'm actually just displaying them in the container div. So for me, this was the very first web part. So I used as much as knowledge as I can from the existing samples and from my learning and eventually it worked. But then more I studied, I found that this may not be the right way of doing it, but I'll talk uh, about it in, in a second. But before I move on to the next one, I want to go back to the browser and show you the both the clocks that I'm using. So you can see this is the analog clock, and it's actually pretty cool. You can see that the theme is done using uh, JSON, so you can actually design um, different themes and then implement them in the web part. Whatever you like, it's all customizable. The other clock is the um, the React Live clock, which is a digital clock. So you can see there are some so so many examples there um, for the format and the time zone. You can set them manually, or you can set them through the web part. Um, now, before I close, let me jump back to the slides. So the uh, as I said, that the initial implementation of the web part was not that great. It's all looping and and defining the component. So I'm working on a second release of the web part. The, the first update I'm doing in there is that I'm not allowing the user to enter the time uh, or GMT values uh, as is, like plus five or minus five. Rather, 
the list will have all the predefined um, globally identified time zones. So you will be selecting a GMT plus five, uh, you know, for US or uh, Eastern time and, and, and other time zones. Uh, then it will also already automatically detect the day daylight savings. If the, if the location has a DST on, it will automatically update the, the time. The whole implementation will be done using React components so that we don't uh, have that code in the render and in the in the component bit mount. An option that I'm I'm trying to implement that we the web part will provide you an option to either use PNPJS or Microsoft Graph. Uh, so that let's say you have a single list in the in the root SharePoint online site and you, you want to use it everywhere else in all the site collections that you have. So that way Microsoft Graph will be powerful because you will add the web part and choose that I want to use Microsoft Graph. And this way you will be able to select the reusable list from the root site collection. Um, you can then, um, this will also allow you to add the same web part as a tab in Microsoft Teams, uh, which will make it a lot more reusable than it is right now. Uh, the final is the, uh, there is one minor issue that I, um, uh, you know, if, if, because I was not showing the the time on the web part, uh, but if if you if you notice that the time does not tick, so I think that's something that you can consider as uh, uh, not having enough skill set in the React. So I was trying to fix it so that when uh, when the time is added on the page, the the web part uh, moves or the time moves to the with the seconds. So you can see that. Right now, the show time come back, but it doesn't move. It just sticks to as is. So that's part of the next release. I'm working on it based on the available time, but hopefully, um, you know, very soon I will be able to push it back to the samples. Uh, and last, you know, Teams is everywhere, so of course uh, I will add the implementation of the web part to so that it can be added to Teams as well. Um, that's all that I have. Uh, I've added the slides for the reference. What I've used in this web part. Um, I will be happy to answer any questions on on the samples or uh, in the chat. Thank you very much. Patrick and Jerry, don't don't stop yet because we do have some time. I just wanted to let's reiterate some of the things. So first of all, Jerry, awesome job, and this is really really great. Um, the like learning exercise on using individual packages here and there and then combining them, and and it's good that you have that kind of a hey, the next steps I will learn these things, and that's a great way of of absolutely learning things. So don't and don't feel too bad about hey, this isn't necessarily the right way of doing implementing things, but hey, it works. Um, in the end, that's all that, that matters, right? So you, we can always improve the code uh, um, uh, into the as much as we want. So that's a separate discussion. Can we go back on the code? Uh, so can we can we briefly go back on the code? Because you, Jerry, been joining on this community calls, but every now and then we have obviously also new people here. Um, uh, so calling out, for example, that the web part title and a placeholder. These two controls are both coming from the React controls, so the PMP SPFX React controls. So if you go all the way up, can you show the, the package? Just making sure that everybody is aware of this, because you don't have to implement these things. These are super widely used across the world by third party and developers directly from the PMP SPFX controls. Uh, so those are really, really great uh, reusable controls for everybody. And same applies actually for the property pane controls, right? So absolutely. If we go to the property pane and just scrolling up again, just so showing the package name, because that, that's a good reference for finding then additional information because and that's a property pane you didn't use pmp property pane controls here on did you you no, you didn't no i did not i i thought it was uh, i didn't look at it as much as i wanted but um yeah. i just took the the sample that i use as a like a learning step had these implemented so i, I thought it's using but definitely in the in the next implementation i'll be using the pmp one yeah, absolutely. Just just out of curiosity, where do you actually get the list of lists uh, from the site? So that means that you have the code piece for that one in here, right? Uh, I'm sorry, the list of lists? List of lists. You had a, a list in the drop down. Oh, yes, it's right here. And that's the get locations. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Sorry. So, so it's you have right here. Yeah, so precisely. It's the yes. Property field list picker. Yep. And this calls the, the, the operation where 
No, this is property field list picker, and this is this is not out of the box control, isn't it? I'd um, I think this is. Really? Yeah. Do we have the effects property list? Yeah, controls? there we go. Yeah. Then that's yeah. what I'm actually looking for. Yeah. So yeah. exactly. Sure. So yeah. it is a PMP SPFX control. So again, open source community contributed control for people to take advantage. That's what I was looking for. So yeah. sure. uh, now, just out of curiosity, uh, how hard was it for you to actually make all of these things happen? Just if there's new people in the game, in this call who are being told that you need to implement stuff in SPFX, how hard was it? And and what any any other learnings just to recap your learnings on this journey? I think the 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 the, the overall design. I have been I had de developed applications for SharePoint for a long time, but mostly the web parts, old style web parts. This was different because uh, I had to make sure that I learned the React pieces of it nicely. You know, it was not simple as just dragging the button and clicking on it and getting it done. Uh, I, I, I think I struggled in the mostly in the properties implementation first, but once I get away from that, uh, you know, I was mostly thinking the classic development where, oh, you know, when there's a method called on property change, I have to have a method called on property field change. So I was thinking more on that, but then I realized that these are kind of the overall out of the box implementations, which I don't have to worry about. If I bring, I if I configure my properties nicely, and then I know that for me the most important method is the selected list, where I have uh, or the selected list where I know that when a user is selecting the properties from the from the property pane, they're actually selected in a in a in a in a in a property. Now I can play with that property. When the property change, I don't have to worry about implementing that on property change method. So when that uh, uh, challenge was away. The next was, of course, what is the best way to render the components? And and it was not about uh, the hard, you know, if SPFX part was pretty okay, you know, I was able to understand how to, uh, you know, write the code nicely and make it run. But once that part was done, the pieces were, you know, what is the best way of rendering? Um, should I render it as component? Should I render it as a code? So initially, I did just rendering directly as. I would say a GSX. Yeah, and, and that's obviously this that part is is always debatable. So of course, if you are a academically you want to do academically correct React, then you create components and not inline code. But again, it's HTML. In the end, the React components are being rendered as an HTML to the browser as well. So they're being transformed to, to HTML. So it's not a really a I wouldn't charge anybody for doing both. So, but again, depends on the coding standards and approach and 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 all of that. So, but really cool. Thank you, Cherry, for yeah, this just one. one just one comment yeah. I want to have that I didn't find. Um, maybe uh, we can work on it. You know, I, I should work on it. But I didn't find a place where I can have this like a full step-by-step uh, -step process to actually develop something. I, I I know everything is there. Lots of stuff is there, but I I, I couldn't find one way of implementing. Uh, let's say how to read the 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 list collection, and then from the list collection, how to make you know select the list and get the items, and then show them in the web part. There are lots of samples out there, but the problem is every sample is using its own technique. There's yeah. no one way of doing it. Somebody's using yeah. you know I collection, somebody's using array list, somebody's using different methods. So that made it really hard for me initially to uh, to make pick one and easy and and most feasible method of reading those values. Yeah, yeah, absolutely makes sense. And, and, and I think even on our samples and tutorials, I think we should slightly more focused on the React and, and really do an end-to-end -end story with React and Office UI Fabric or Fluent Controls, because that that's anyway the direction where we're heading. And, and for those who are like wondering why React, well, Microsoft has chosen React as the framework. Technically, you can use Angular, but uh, most of the reusable controls are available in the React. So that's why, if you can choose React for SPFX. So. Awesome, thank you very much. Yep, thank you, Cherry, for that one. Thank you.